untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I'm taking a look at a blue-green frog self-mill deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the full playset of Grolnok the Omnivore, the 4-mana 3-3 legendary frog from Crimson Vow, says whenever a frog you control attacks, mill 3 cards, and whenever a permanent card is put into your graveyard from your library, exile it with a croak counter on it, and we may play lands and cast spells from exile as long as they have croak counters on them. So Grolnok can potentially provide a ton of card advantage, especially in a deck that has other ways of milling ourselves, and putting those cards in exile. And Grolnok is also incredibly synergistic with Willowgeist. The 1 mana 1 1 Tree Folk Spirit has Trample and says whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Willowgeist, and when it dies, we also gain life equal to its power. So Willowgeist and Grolnok are best buddies because whenever we put one of our permanents in our graveyard with Grolnok in play, it will get exiled, meaning that for almost every single card in our deck that ends up in our graveyard by mill, we will put an extra counter on Willowgeist, and the few non-permanent cards in our deck have flashback, so it's still great value to mill them over. And then a Willowgeist is also a great combo with the Croaking counterpart, a 3-mana sorcery, creating a token that's a copy of target non-frog creature, except it's a 1-1 one -one green frog, and it also has flashback for 5 mana so we can replay it out of the graveyard if we happen to mill it or if we cast the front half. So if we can copy our Willow Geist with Croaking Counterpart, it turns into a 1-1 Frog with pretty much all the same abilities. So then if we also have a Grolnok in play, the Frog token can enable Grolnok's Mill 3 ability by attacking itself and it will start picking up those counters thanks to the cards getting exiled from our graveyard. So those are just some great synergies to start out with. Then at 1 mana we also have the full playset of a Death Bonnet Sprout, a 1-1 one -one Fungus that at the beginning of our upkeep mills one card, and then if there are three or more creature cards in our graveyard, we get to transform it into Death Bonnet Hulk, a 3-3 three -three that at the beginning of our upkeep lets us exile a card from any graveyard, and if a creature card was exiled this way, we can put a plus one plus one counter on the Hulk, so we can also start exiling cards from our own graveyard, which can help put additional counters on Willow Geist, and once we have a Grolnok in play, if we haven't transformed our Sprout into Hulk yet, then we get to probably keep the Sprout around for a while, as all cards that we mill will end up getting exiled, and then the Sprout can help us provide more card advantage thanks to Grolnok's ability basically, which is still great. And then we also have the full play set of Cobalt Lancer, a 1 mana 3-3, three, three, but as an additional cost to cast it, we need to exile a creature card from our graveyard, which can also sometimes be an advantage if we have a Willow Geist in play, exiling a creature from our graveyard will grow it as well. And for 4 mana we can exile the Cobalt Lancer from our graveyard to draw a card, so yet another way to potentially trigger Willow Geist. Then at 2 mana, we've got a full playset of a Vile Spawn Spider, a 2-3 Spider with Reach, and at the beginning of our upkeep lets us mill a card, so another way to fuel the graveyard. Can also pay for mana, tap and sacrifice a spider to create a 1-1 green insect creature token for each creature card in our graveyard. Not an ability we will be using very often, since our graveyard often ends up getting exiled by the time that ability would be relevant, between Death Bonnet Sprout, Cobalt Lancer, and eventually Grolnok exiling our permanence as well, but still a great enabler for the deck. Then we also have the full play set of a Root Coil Creeper, the 2 mana 2-2 two two can tap to add 1 mana of any color, or 2 mana of any one color that we can spend only to cast spells from our graveyard, so great synergy with flashback. And then we can also pay 2 mana, tap and exile the Creeper to return a card with flashback we own from exile to our hand. So it combines very nicely with our Croaking Counterpart, as well as our two copies of Tapping at the Window. A 2 mana sorcery lets us take a look at the top 3 cards of our library, reveal a creature card from among them and put it into our hand, and the rest ends up in our graveyard and can flash back for 3 mana. So a great way to find our Grolnok for instance, and still put additional cards in our graveyard. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Eccentric Farmer, a 2-3 that when it enters a battlefield mills 3 cards, and then we may return a land card from our graveyard to our hand, which also potentially triggers Willow Geist, and is a great way to synergize with Grolnok as well, putting additional cards in exile without needing to attack with any frogs. 
And speaking of attacking with frogs, of course Croaking Counterpart also synergizes with Grolnok nicely, so one of the better curves that our deck is capable of is playing an early Willow Geist, maybe turn 3 copy it with Croaking Counterpart, and then turn 4 when we play Grolnok we can already be attacking with a frog and putting additional counters on the copy of Willow Geist as well as the original. And then we also have two copies of Slogurk, the Overslime, a 3-3 Legendary Ooze with Trample, saying whenever a land is put into our graveyard from anywhere, put a plus one plus one counter on Slogurk, and we can remove three plus one plus one counters from Slogurk to return it to its owner's hand. And when Slogurk leaves the battlefield, we can return up to three target land cards from our graveyard to our hand. So tons of synergy there as well. Also combos very nicely with some of our utility lands, like our two copies of Field of Ruin, can potentially keep keep destroying all the opponent's non-basic lands and returning Field of Ruin thanks to Slogurk's ability. And then we also have two copies of Hall of the Storm Giants, which can be important against opposing control decks as a nice 7-7 creature land that's difficult to interact with that we can then potentially still get back with our Overslime. And then the rest of our mana base includes four basic islands, eight basic forests, and then all the blue-green dual lands with the Pathway, as well as the new Dream Root Cascade. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Sprout can enable an early Lancer, so can Tapping. So hopefully they cannot sacrifice gas to kill Sprout. But even if they do, I can uh, cast a turn to a Lancer at least. Opponent gets Necrotic Fumes. And we'll go tapping here. Find a Willow Geist. So still no creature in Graveyard, unfortunately. But Willow Geist, also great combo with Lancer. Take two. Opponent missing double black as well. Still no creature and a third Lancer. So this is getting a little awkward. Good flashback tapping at the window, but it's also better once I have Willow Geist in play. Could just play Slogurk, could copy the Sprout with Counterpart. Although I would prefer to copy Willow Geist. Although when my hand is triple Lancer, Maybe I should copy the Sprout just to have more ways to fill my graveyard. Although there is the risk that our opponent's holding a spot removal spell. So the safest play might just be to play Slogurk. And then we'll wait on the one drops until we can uh, maybe play them more efficiently. Opponent found double black. Of course, this is also blood on the snow deck, so gotta watch out for that. And then Slogurk gives us a lot of lands here, so that's nice. Spider in the graveyard, another Geist. Okay, so how about... This turn I can double Geist plus Cobalt Lancer. Could also counterpart a Geist instead. And then next turn the Lancers can still grow the Geist before they need to attack. That's also decent. And a little bit more mana efficient too. Gotta be careful for various sweepers. Spider Queen should be beatable here since we have two trampling creatures that are about to get much larger. So I don't think I'm playing around a Blood on the Snow since it's gonna be pretty difficult with this hand. So yeah, let's 
make some plays here. I can only play two Lancers at the moment, so it might be better to flashback tapping and then play single Lancer. Which also grows all the Geists. And then definitely take a Grolnok. And Exile, doesn't matter. And then the Frog. Geist is more valuable than the non-Frog. Um, but probably still send both at Spider Queen to make sure she dies. And then if her opponent knows what's up, they're gonna try and take out the Frog Geist. Alright, opponent lets Spider Queen go. So do we see a blood on the snow here? Looks like it. Alright, that's too bad, so we're gonna lose our board. But we still have some decent leftovers. I guess I'll uh, prevent the most damage I can here. Since this attack is pretty obvious. So next turn, what's my play? Can get on the board with a couple Lancers. And I can also play Grolnok if I want. Alright, opponent going for kill Lancer instead of make a treasure, so maybe they don't have a blood on the snow, which I would be very ecstatic about since these guys are about to get incredibly large. Alright, Professor Onyx. Fair enough, so maybe they're waiting on the sweeper here. It's also possible. And then they can get back Professor Onyx. We did draw back up Grolnok. So can I actually kill my opponent is a question. It could be possible. We've got triple Geist. If they each get three additional counters, then we're hitting the opponent for 18. So yeah, that plus an extra Lancer growing Geist should be more than enough actually. So your opponent may be going for the greedy play of waiting on their sweeper, underestimating the power of Willow Geist. And we're about to show them why. So this is 15, but because we control a frog, we get to trigger Grolnok, which will trigger three more times. And each trigger will separately give Willow Geist a counter. And there we go. Blink and you missed it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very decent hand. Willow Geist into Root Coil Creeper, although I guess we don't get to play a 2-drop unless I draw another land. So I guess we'll uh, pass up on the turn 1 Willow guys to make sure we can play turn 2 Creeper to accelerate us. And uh, then next turn could technically already play Grolnok, so we can start milling ourselves. Fading Hope sadly means that's gonna slow us down, so next turn probably replay Creeper plus Geists. Opponent foretells what could be a Doomscar. So it could be a tough matchup ahead of us. Could also go for Vile Spawn Spider plus Willow Geist, so maybe next turn I can play a Cobalt Lancer. I think I still... Geist plus Creeper give me more options next turn with the extra mana. Opponent passes. So I would like to play Grolnok here. Um, I guess I'll play it now. Opponent could still syncopate it or divide by zero it. But I guess we play around Jory Disruption this way.
could just see them let it resolve and next turn Doomscar. Right, it's gonna be a side coming instead. Alright, at least we don't need to fear a Doomscar, and I get to play a Cobbled Lancer here, growing the Geists. So we still have some good early pressure, although a Sweeper here is going to be pretty difficult to recover from. So this would be a pretty decent spot to find like a tapping at the window, can maybe find two creatures, can still play a Spider alongside it and grow the Geists. It's going to be a tapped hall. And our opponent passes, finding Eccentric Farmer, which is worth playing here. It's going to grow the Geists. Opponent's going to bounce it. In which case, probably replay it alongside Spider and hit for three. Next turn can draw a card with a Lancer, which also grows Willow Geists. And hopefully mill over some good flashback cards with the spider. It's going to be a faithful mending, maybe helping them hit their land drops. So I'm assuming our opponent just blue white control here. Eventually trying to win the game with a new Hullbreaker. They discard its absence, so could see a sweeper next turn to wipe the board if they got rid of their spot removal spell. Right, flashback mending. So our opponent is tapped out, but still at a healthy life total, so no chance we can kill them here. Alright, so let's start by drawing. Find another creeper. Don't know if that's worth playing here. Opponents at 8. So if they don't have a sweeper and they just have like one interactive spell, they're still pretty dead, so I don't see a reason to overextend. Although if they do have a Doomscar, I also don't really see myself coming back with just a creeper in hand. Right, Sunset Ravelry instead. Makes two one ones. And farmer the draw. Start there. Resolves. So did not mill any lands unfortunately, but that's okay. Can flashback tapping, which also triggers the Willow Geist, and then probably not gonna use a creeper and instead attack with it. Or I could use a Creeper since it trades for the 1-1 one -one tokens, but otherwise they can also chum block, so... Let's flash back. Growth of Geist. Opponent might be holding a Memory Deluge, which they're planning to cast here to try and find a Sweeper. We're not quite going to be able to kill them. Alright, never mind. A Devious Cover up to counter. Makes me hopeful, because now there's less of a chance we face a Sweeper next turn. So let's send in the troops and hope for the best. Guys trample, so that's probably not the best block available. Alright, let's cross our fingers. And then our opponent explodes. Sweet, so they went digging but could not find a doom scar in time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand. Turn one, do I Geist or Sprout? It's an interesting question. So turn two we can Creeper, turn three... If I play Farmer, I would like to have the Geist in play already. Even though I miss out on a few cards getting milled. 
think it's still Geist. And then hopefully Creeper could even ramp straight into Grolnok if we draw land too. Which would also be nice. Up against a blue-green teamer. Turn to Innkeeper. So probably your typical treasures deck with chariot and gold spans. Did not find a land unfortunately, but farmer can maybe help. Opponent does appear to have a one mana instance. And then I can still play a Sprout after attacking. It's gonna be a Fading Hope. Alright. In that case, do I still replay Geist or do I play Sprout? Now I might be in favor of Sprout. Because next turn I'm going to want to play Grolnok first. Opponent passes with 3 mana. Another farmer. Yeah, probably still play Grolnok here. Farmer can attack. Prismari command. Alright. I guess uh, no Grolnok for me then. Should have just casted main phase before attacking. Although it does imply that my opponent has another instant in hand that they wanted to keep open the option to cast it, otherwise they would have just main phased it. So... Now I think Farmer to ensure a land next turn. And then I can still replay Geist. Right. Would have been nicer to have a Grolnok in play, but still doing fine. Just bear a Sentinel. And our opponent passes with another instant available, most likely. Sprout's about to transform, so opponent might have to kill it here. And another Prismari command. Alright, and then time for Grolnok. And the farmers can attack. And then best case scenario, we can attack with Grolnok to actually mill and grow the Geist. If not, we have some other ways to fill the graveyard still. So our opponent untaps with access to now 8 mana. And Inferno of the Storm Mounts is the big play. Yeah, it's a good one. Can eventually trump it with a spider if needed. But hopefully we can outrace it here. And Grolnok appears to have a clean attack, which is great news. Now, I might want to try and find another Willow guys before attacking, so it also picks up the counters from the mill 3 effect. So let's tap. Did not find anything. Double counterpart ends up in the graveyard, and the land we can play from exile. So it didn't grow the guys as much as I would have liked. Now I think I attack first and then see what we mill before deciding what to do next. This time we reveal three permanents. So guys, it's gonna be a 5-5. Five five.
opponents at 6. And then at 14, I guess if my opponent has like an Alvaren's Epiphany, they could kill me with the Inferno. So that's a reason to play the Reach creature. And then I don't really have any other plays available. And then if the game were to go longer, we have double counterpart to copy Willow Geist. Make additional frogs to enable Grolnok as well. So we have some powerful things going on. Opponent's got one card in hand. So if they attack, I'll take it. If they have an Epiphany next turn, I can jump. And our opponent concedes. All right, I'll take it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Hand is okay. Missing a two mana play, but I'll try it. Ideally, pick up like a root coil creeper or a willow geist. Facing a lair of the Hydra. So next turn play Farmer, which we can copy with Counterpart as well. And our opponent is indeed Mono Green. Alrighty, so... Get the Farmer going, which can help transform Sprouts. Which will happen next turn, and then Cobalt Lancer can provide a bit of value too. Still hoping to find a Willow Geist as soon as possible. So we can start growing a large creature to block all these 3-3s. Three so, can draw with Lancer or copy with Counterpart, which is probably more productive. Now if we copy the Hulk, it would be a 1-1, one -one, but it would be the Hulk side of the card as opposed to the Sprout. So it can maybe start picking up plus one counters. Or I can uh, copy the Farmer to potentially mill over more goodies in the graveyard. I guess we'll copy the Farmer. Copying the Pack Leader also an option, but I think I prefer this. Did mill over lots of creatures. So, would love to draw a Grolnok or a Willow Geist here. Blizzard Brawl is just a trade. Opponent might have forgotten they didn't have enough snow lands available, or I guess they just wanted to trade before the Hulk picked up any plus one counters. And a Spider threatening to make a lot of tokens here, so that's potentially exciting. Can even copy it with Counterpart, so we have two spiders to potentially make tokens with. And making tokens with spiders is not something that happens very often, but in this particular draw it could be the right play. Augur of Autumn plays a land of the top. Can mill over more creatures. Alright, so can sacrifice a spider and then play a Lancer from hand. Get nine insects. And uh, keep the Lancers in there to draw a card with. Alright, so we're just gonna swarm the opponent here. Or at least try to. Gnarl Professor can learn. So they've got a bit of an unusual build of mono green. Not a typical list. And then let's see, I don't quite have the mana to counterpart and sacrifice the spider. So they want to copy it before making more tokens or they just make more tokens and then just start swinging like crazy. Opponent's got four blockers, so almost considering an all-out attack. Yeah, if we make eight more tokens, attack with everyone. Our opponent's taking 
at least 8 damage. And then we would have 16 tokens with my opponent at about 11 life. So that should be enough to kill them through four blockers. And uh, I guess we can attack first, because we might end up with more creatures in our graveyard. So everyone but the spider attack. And then I might as well leave up Field of Rune. Right. Let's see how our opponent deals with 19 insects. They've got quite a bit of damage on the board themselves, but yeah. No answer to the insect swarm, so a pretty unusual spider win here, but I'll take it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow. No one or two drop I can play right away. It is powerful with eventually Grolnok as a powerful play. So I'm really hoping to draw anything I can play turns one and two, basically. I'll try it. But could get run over here being on the draw. Another Grolnok. And two up against the mill deck. Well, they just uh, enabled my Cobbled Lancer for me. Now we still have to be careful because, of course, if I mill myself, we're also helping the opponent's game plan. So it is a mutual trade off. But for now, we can reap the rewards and then probably go for Slogurg over Farmer. And yeah, Grolnok can exile all those cards, the opponent mills. So already a very stocked graveyard, if we ever find a spider, that's gonna be great. But we'll attack and play a Slogurk. Which can also pick up extra counters if the opponent mills me. Alright, it's gonna die to three damage frostbite. I can return a bunch of lands to my hand if I want to. Sure, why not? And then next turn, it's time for Grolnok. Which is hoping to exile plenty of copies of uh, Willow Geist, which would then become enormous if her opponent mills me with a Grolnok in play. So we'll hit for three. Don't necessarily want to attack with any frogs to mill myself, but just a passive ability should be quite powerful. Now, of course, our opponent's also going to be milling me with cards like Tasha's Hideous Laughter, which exiles instead of putting cards in my graveyard, so that gets around Grolnok's ability somewhat. But if they're using the crab or maddening cacophony, we're good to go. It's going to be another frostbite. So. Glad to have this Lancer applying pressure, but our opponent's answering all our threats pretty efficiently, so we could be in trouble once they start copying Tasha's hideous laughter. So I guess we'll attack and play another Grolnok. Can play the Hall as well. So those get exiled.
down to 32 cards. And Iteration gonna copy their next play, could be a Cacophony. Yep, so it mills me for 16. All those cards pretty much get exiled. So now I can play a Willow Geist from exile, but we might be dead before it gets a chance to attack. So we're down to 16 cards. Don't think Grolnok wants to be attacking. But let's take a look at our exile pile here. Alright, so we're definitely interested in playing this Willow Geist. Can play a couple spiders. Don't really want to play the Death Bonnet Sprout because it also mills me. So I guess just play a pair of spiders. Question is, does Grolnok want to attack? It is 3 damage, which is significant, but I'm assuming that if I untap with Willow Geists, we can just kill them with it. On the other hand, I can also just copy Willow Geist with Counterpart. And then even if they mill my entire library with like a couple of cards left, which would make it more difficult to grow the Geist, I can still flash back a bunch of cards to help grow it. So I don't hate the idea of flashing back counterpart here. And then just hitting for three. And hope we get another turn. Uh oh, dual strike, that's a bad sign. And I crush the weak. Alright, so it's just gonna wipe the board essentially. So now I'm a little sad I didn't make more use of the cards in exile, but so it goes. Backup crab, opponent is down to just an iteration in the graveyard, so we might still be able to recover. 14 cards left. I know there's still two copies of Willow Geists somewhere in my deck, but um, might not be able to draw them in time. So what's the play? Yeah, it's not like I have a lot of pressure in hand at the moment. Can start attacking with all of the Storm Giants, I suppose. Maybe that's my best move. As opposed to playing out more creatures. Opponent takes it. So next turn I could force him to chump at the very least. Yeah, I think we make him chump and then I still die to Madagny Cocophony or a uh, Tasha Sidious Laughter. But we should be able to beat most other cards. So this gets to attack and I can also play a Death Bonnet Sprout. I didn't think milling one card is going to lose me the game because Cacophony mills for eight. And I'm assuming a Hideous Laughter would kill me. So that just gives me an extra attacker for next turn. Alright, let's see if they top deck. They've got seven outs, I believe. So, pretty decent chance. And yeah, there's the iteration. In two. Maddening Cacophony. Alright, so they got us here with the last top deck. GG's. Possible we could have played Death Bonus Proud earlier to transform it and exile the iteration. Although, with hideous laughter, I think we die regardless. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Hoping to pick up Willow Geist, maybe Croaking Counterpart to synergize with Grolnok. Facing green. So we're looking at turn one Death Bonnet Sprout, turn two Spider. Into Farmer, into Grolnok. 
but could easily improve if we, as I've said, pick up a croaking counterpart. We could maybe copy like the Sprout on turn 3, so it can attack and trigger Grolnok turn 4. It's gonna be a Lotus Cobra. And I'll offer the trade, play Spider. Turn 3, 4 mana for a Spirit of the Elder Guard. That's a good one. So can expect them to have Blizzard Brawl in there. We milled over a Croaking Counterpart and drew a Willow Geist. Okay. So do I just want to play Willow Geist this turn over Farmer? As a farmer can be more useful once we have a Grawl knock in play to exile three cards. I think so, even though it's not super man efficient here. The upside of farmer is that it can maybe transform Sprout sooner, but could also be an advantage to keep Sprout on the front side once we play Grawl knock, so it helps us mill and draw more cards essentially. But if our opponent has a Blizzard Brawl for Grolnok, then our entire game plan sort of falls apart. It's going to be a run on 7 and an attack for 3. So, if I triple block, they probably take out my two 1-1s, which is not great for me. I'll take it. Alright, so is it time for Grolnok? I think so. Don't have the mana to flashback counterpart, otherwise we could maybe copy Geist before playing Grolnok. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go for it. And hope our frog doesn't get removed. So opponents got access to 6 mana. Colony Ambush kills Grolnok, sadly. And I guess we can trade for the token. Never mind. So if I play Farmer and Lancer, we can pressure Ren by growing the guys twice. Run down. And then Field of Ruin can answer one of the creature lanes. Still facing quite a bit of damage on the board. Opponent rumbles in. So, can trade for Haven. Take 12. Or I can. Jump, take five, and then counterpart probably wants to be copying Willow Geist anyway. And then we still have Field of Ruin for Lair of the Hydra. And then we'll start exiling some creatures. Might want to exile my own creature to grow Willow Geists.
tapping at the window. So if counterpart goes for Willow Geist, then uh, this turns into a 5-5. Five five. And that's my entire turn. And then next turn we can try and make some progress, assuming I'm not dead on board. I guess it's worth a shot. Alternatively, I can tapping and look for some other creature, although I'm not sure what really saves me. And we'll pass it back. Can always chump with my token as well if needed. Right, so it's going to be a 5 5 lair. So I could trade and chump. Pick up a spider. That one's promising because can generate quite a few tokens here. So I can play this counterpart Willow Geist or counterpart Spider itself. So we have multiple ways to make use of the ability. Could also keep up Field of Ruin to answer Lair. But then I still need a, a Chum Blocker for the 7-7. Seven, seven, unless I want to Chump with Willow Geist. Which I guess is an option. If I copy the spider, I can chump the 7-7, seven, seven, but then Lair is still quite threatening. So I think I'm better off making the Willow Geist one larger. And then we'll see what our opponent does. Alright, land means Hydra can become pretty large. Just attacks with the 8-8s. Eight Alright, so... This turn I could double block. They might kill Willow Geist and then... We've got the Spiders to win us the game. Feels like they should have been more aggressive this turn with Lair of the Hydra instead. Get to mill two more cards. Another spider at the draw. So, one sequencing here could be sacrifice a real spider. So, next turn, if I sack the token, there's one additional creature in the graveyard. Although it is a 2 3 blocker, which is slightly better. So, I could still decide to sacrifice a token here. So, let's do that. Make a whole bunch of tokens. Another pack leader. Of course, pack leader can trample. But we're doing a good job of gumming up the board with 1 1 tokens. A lair awkwardly turns into a 4 4. Alright, I can make a bunch more tokens, maybe cast Tapping first, or I can sack both spiders. And then we can just kill the opponent next turn. Sounds like a plan. This should suffice to just kill them in one attack.
tank leaders gain trample. Well, we managed to fight a good fight. Probably would have lost with optimal play from our opponent, but uh, that's why we play the games and not just present deck lists and compare who's going to win. So. And that should be good enough. Move to combats. And 30 spiders is a nice number to finish the game with. Alright, so even though Grolnok didn't get to do its thing in the last game, still got to see some cool synergies in action. Overall, what do I think of the deck? Sadly, it's not all that great against the mono-white aggro decks, because they can be quite aggressive, they've got flying creatures, and we're pretty soft to flyers with only spider as our reach creature to block them, don't have any real creature interaction, so they can typically outrace us, and then they also tend to have lots of creature removal between Brutal Cathar and Skycliff Apparition, so they can take out a key creature at the right time. So that matchup's not great, and Mono White's probably the most played deck in the best of one standard at the moment. And then when it comes to decks like the Blue Red Epiphany combo deck or Mono Black Snow Control, those are also matchups I would not want to face playing this deck. So yeah, probably just a little bit too slow for standard, at least for competitive standard. Definitely had a lot of fun playing this in the normal play queue. So if you're looking for a fun self-mill deck that plays blue and green cards, then this might still be the deck for you. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.